we share with the rest of the world and, and how um, the reason, right? The reason the reason Let's see if we can we can do something quickly to find out exactly where the problem is. Now, I, I did something very simple, right? It didn't take me weeks like you did, right? I did a very basic crude application that allows you to create more, I guess we can call it a data lab application. Now, now it's a simple application, but it has so many different moving parts to it, right? Just like the final output is like this, but you notice that I'm using Bootstrap, obviously, right? And um, everything's already wired, obviously. I can, oh wait, I probably don't have access to the internet, so this won't work. I've done what I expect you guys to do by the 10th, which is finish the implementation and then hopefully deploy it somewhere, right? So I've already deployed this application to Heroku, right? And what it does is it does something very basic, but so many different moving parts, right? You can add people to a database. Um, using obviously this web application. You can add projects. By people, I mean you guys, right? You can add projects, and then you can associate people to projects. Um, so, home page, I can view people, right? Hopefully this works. I can view people. I can look at detailed information about these people. Now, it's simple, but I'm trying to show you to say, in fact, if you look at the commit messages for this particular project, you notice that I've been building up on it, right? I start with what I said you should do. You first of all implement the functionality, the routes. After you implement the routes, you hook up the functionality to the forms, right? If you have any forms. And because we don't have time for you to start, uh, we had initially agreed that you'd work with the main structure, but we can't do that because obviously I don't know how many people have started reading up on React. How many? What? Yeah, because I mean, you probably don't have time for this, right? I mean, you don't have enough time to start learning this main stack, right? So what I said is you can render these things, the HTML on the server side using EJS. Because what we're doing is basic stuff, right? which is what I'm doing here. So uh, we can view people. We can, now I want you to pay particular attention to what's happening to these things here, by the way. I don't know if you can see the URL, but what you're seeing in the URL at the, the um, I guess the different, the different routes that I've implemented, right? So home page, uh, this is just a static page, obviously. Uh, so using sorry? Using this is an express application. Wow. <laughs> so you can view people. What, what makes you think it's not an express application? You can view someone, you can edit, right? So Monaum, I can save this person and then the name appears there. I can delete this person from the database and he won't be there anymore, he's gone, right? I can, I can view the projects that we currently have running, right? View details of the projects and see the people that are associated with the project. Now this is very basic because um, ideally, it's supposed to be maybe a cascading delete or something. If I delete a person, then perhaps they shouldn't appear here, right? but they still appear here, which is fine. Um, I can edit a project, right? Right. So in this case, we probably have four people associated with this project. Then when we view it, they will all appear here, right? Um, I can delete the project if I want to. It's gone, right? So no more projects. I can add a new project. It's a crude application. It's not that complex. It didn't take me long to do this anyway. Uh, Yeah, well, because you're not reading, are you? Now, because I read, I was able to, to do this, right? <laughs> no, there's no experience here. I have no experience doing these things. It's just learning like you're doing, right? So you can view into, so you notice that, but behind the scenes, right? 
if I if we start if we start from the very basics, right? And I told you to follow through with those tutorials. If we start from the very basics and we say we say not necessarily working on this late on Saturday, right? How do I check out if if I check out a particular commit? How do I check 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 out master? Okay, it's master, right? Okay, so if I if I Open. Let's start from the beginning so that we understand what's happening, right? First thing I did, obviously, is I uh, I create, I identify the different, I identify the different, I create a basic project structure, right? And you can see the structure here, right? I know that because this is an MVC application, I will need models, I will need views, I will need, uh, what's the C for? Controllers, right? It's an MVC application. So you, the, the basis of, it's an MVC controller, but controllers in Express are called routes, right? So the controllers are going to dictate what's going to happen. Um, the model allows you to fetch data from the database, right, play around with data. And then the viewer allows you to to see exactly what is happening, right, as the user is interacting with the application. So, which is why I have, uh, uh, I have the routes here, routes folder, which is for the controllers, right? The views here for the V. Um, the only thing missing here is I don't have the models yet for the initial commit. But you notice that I start off by creating the base, the base structure of the project, right? Once I do that, um, Once I do that, just going to have to check out second commit. Once I do that, I install the relevant NPM um, modules that I need, right? Of course, we can skip this message. I don't think we need to do that. We all know how to, we all know which modules we need to implement, right? Um, and then once I install the modules, the first thing I start doing is I, I'm going to run it here, actually, so that it's uh, so that you see exactly what's happening. Ooh. I'm wondering why this is not working here. Don't know. Maybe we should check out again. Hopefully, it will be able to run from here. Let's just see. Check out that. Okay. So you notice that at this stage, I've, I've implemented the basic, the, the the basic things associated with application, namely uh, the routes. Right. I have um, I've, I've separated because there's there's so much happening. If you look at if you look at the the final output here, there's a lot happening behind the scenes, right? I need a route that is going to render the home page, route number one. I need a route that is going to render all the people, right? Route number two. I need, this is for the interns, right, for people. I need a route that is going to render an individual person's details, right? I need a route that is going to enable me to edit an individual's details, right? I need a route that is going to enable me to delete people, right? 
route number five. Hopefully Linda is gone now. Uh, I need a route that is going to enable me to add a new person, route number six. I need a route that is going to enable me render all the projects, route number seven. I need a route that is going to enable me to view a single project, route number eight. I need a route that will enable me to edit a project, that's route number nine. I need a route that is going to enable me to delete a project, that's route number 10. But in addition, I need a route that is going to render the edit page, right, separate route, because this is a GET request, right? So rendering the form involves you issuing a GET request, but submitting a form is a POST request. So that's route number 11. I need a separate route that's going to enable me to uh, to render the project form, right? That's route number 12. So I have a total of 12 routes that I have to implement. Because I know that this is what I want to do, that's a good starting point, right? All I have to do is just, I don't, I don't have to come up with a, the complete implementation. All I have to do is just uh, maybe write simple code, like I think I, I hope this is what I did here. Simple code that will allow me to, so this is a live, this is a deployed site obviously, right? It's on Heroku. If you wish to, you can, uh, you can view this, right? It's on Heroku, uh, it's there. But if I run, if I, if I render the, the application that uh, is associated with the current commit, uh, and I say localhost 3000, you notice that what, what I start with is just, I, I don't know if you can see the text here. What I start with is just saying, because I've identified that I need 12 routes, I'm just going to have like the base functionality of those routes, just to render out a piece of text to say this is a route, this is a route, this is a route, right? This is what I'm doing here. So hopefully if I go to, I don't know if I had intents implemented here, this is a route for intents, um, the route for projects, right? I don't know if it's there. You understand what I mean? So once you implement, once you figure out that this is what you need, go to the next step. I will uh, check out the master. And at this stage, by the way, I'd already connected the, the database also. So if you look at the, the commit messages that I have here, the things, the process I was going through, I, first of all, start by uh, working through the uh, best structure the projects, and then I install the necessary uh, NPM packages that I need, right, for this thing to work, or at least for, for the basic functionality to be able to work. Um, and then I implement the routes, right, and then I establish a database connection. Um, and then I start, I start creating schemas that I map onto existing uh, database collections, because the the normal thing to do is you design a database, right? So you know beforehand how your uh, collections are going to be structured, right? And then your schemas, the schemas that you're going to be implementing are going to map onto the collections that you've designed, hopefully, right? You can either design them beforehand, so I'll show you what I did here. Uh, And this is just, it's not like this is comprehensive, but um, I guess it helps put the point across, my opinion anyway. Uh, so if you look at the, the basic structure of, the basic structure of, of, of the, the RA, which is like the people collection, you notice that I have, um, well, this is automatically generated, but the name of the person, their ID, uh, the email address, and the email address is going to be an array because we say the, you can have more than one email address, right? You can have more than one phone number. Phone number. Some of you gave us two phone numbers, right? Two email addresses, and then the residential address. So I know that uh, whatever scheme I'm going to have to implement, the schema, right? The Mongo scheme allows you to, to seamlessly or to easily query the database, fetch data, to easily update data, to easily uh, delete data. It's so easy in Mongoose. All you need is just 
the schema. And what you're doing when you're querying, when you're updating, when you're deleting is you're just playing around with instances of that schema. Right? Behind the scenes things or the magic happens. It's not that difficult, right? Um, I do the same thing for the uh, project collection, right? Um, and I decided to come up with this just because it made sense for me. So, and these are not ordered, obviously, but there's a, a project code, like uh, an internal code, like project one, project two, for instance, and then there's a project name, right? Uh, like the first project you guys worked on was that subject repository thing. Um, and then there's a project description, and then we have people that are tied to that particular project. So I had to sit down. It's not like I just woke up and decided so I'm going to come up with this collection structure, right? Sat down and thought about the problem. You, you don't have to sit down and think about the problem because the problem has already been spelled out for you. The hard work has already been done for you. I did the hard work for you. I went out there, found a problem. Yes, I did. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It turns out for most of these things, right, the toughest thing to do is to find a solution to the problem. And for, and this is something that most people don't normally think about really, but it's also hard to identify a problem, right? Identifying a problem is hard. But anyway, um, so by thinking about the problem and the potential solution, I was able to come up with these two collections, right? And they are somehow linked to each other, um, right? Like for instance, the, the, the people, these people have to exist in that other collection, right? Okay. Uh, so now that I have this thing, um, and I, I hope I have, have I already created the schema here, by the way. Just exit. No. Okay, so now that I have the database, I, I, I add the schemas. How many schemas do I need? Two. You need a schema for each collection that you have. Do you understand this? For each collection that you have in the database, you must have an associated schema, right? So in my case, uh, the schemas are in the models folder, right? I have two schemas, the intense schema, which is supposed to be a people schema, and the, just close the .env file here, don't save. Uh, so, and, and what, what I did here, I'll share this if you want to, but I don't know if it's gonna be helpful here. It's not different from the tutorials we've been reading, one, in my opinion. <laughs> but, but what I have here is uh, to help me figure out how I was going to design the schema, right? I just copy pasted uh, a sample record from the collection, from this intense collection, the people collection in this case. And how do I define a schema? What? <laughs> You define a schema, because it's a mongoose schema, you have to first of all import mongoose, right? <laughs> and hopefully you'd have already installed mongoose using npm. npm install mongoose, right? This is a code dependency. It is not a development dependency, right? So you must not issue npm install dash dash save dash dev. Instead you say npm install, so that it appears under the list of core packages in package.json. So if I go in package.json, there's two parts that you have to pay particular attention to. There are the core dependencies, right? And the dev dependencies. When you deploy this to production, so when I deployed it to Heroku, I don't have access to these things. No node more, no uh, .env, because you only use these things when you're developing the application. The only packages that get to be installed when you deploy this are the core dependencies, right? Um, okay. So, the schema, how do you define the schema? Very easy, you import mongoose, right? Um, and then what I, I guess the standard practice, I guess this is convention obviously, is you apparently you create an instance of mongoose schema, right? I'm just naming it schema here, by convention. You, you can skip line number 20 if you want to, but import, import mongoose and then create an instance of mongoose.schema, and then you create the actual schema that you'd be interested in. This point in time, it's the intent schema, the people schema, right? Using the thing, the sample record that I copied, I know that my schema will have full name. The full name, 
will be composed of strings. Right? But, uh, and I deliberately included from line number 23 to 26, it's just an alternative way to um, defining or specifying the data types of the schema. What we're doing here is we're specifying the data types, right? A person will have a full name, ID, email address, phone number, and residential address. There have to be data types associated to these things, right? So a full name has to be a string. Full name is like a combination of first name and last name. It's a string. Um, student ID, so st stupid of me, I guess, but uh, I said it was a string. I could have just as well said it's a number, right? Um, but I guess one of the reasons why I said uh, string is perhaps people might be interested in using their passport numbers, for instance, right? ZN, blah, 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 right? 48, blah, 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 forward slash number for NRC, yeah? So I said string. <clears throat> and then email address is, because you can have multiple email addresses, I'm specifying that this is going to be an array of strings. S simple stuff, right? Same goes for phone number, right? It's a string because uh, I like uh, specifying the actual con uh, country code, uh, international dialing code in my case, so plus 260 plus 264 something. Residential address is just a string. You notice how simple it is. Okay, great. So you create the schema, okay? <laughs> or you've advanced this, that's good. You create the schema, once you create the schema because you need to access this schema in so many other different places, different files, you must export it, right? Um, the way that you export it, the, the conventional way of exporting this is if you have not created the database yet, or this, the collections yet, you, this, you can leave out the optional last, um, last parameter here. But because I already have collections in a database called Data Lab, I'm including this third parameter because it spells out the specific collection that this schema is mapped onto. Ideally, the way Mongoose works is uh, if you have a schema named uh, intern, the collection is going to be pluralized, interns. If it's a schema called people, it's going to be pe right? Oh, person, it's going to be people, right? <laughs> Peoples or something. Um, is this fine? So I do the same thing for, for the projects model, right? Um, I was able to come up with this schema, pretty basic schema, right? Similar to the first one. Um, I guess the only complex thing here is line number 24, where I'm saying the responsibilities and the people that are a part of the project members for this particular, um, for projects are going to be put into an array of strings, right? Your names, right? Simple stuff. And then I export it as well. So you create your schema, what next? So I was doing this in, in, in phases, right? Um, so uh, this commit is for the project schema. Um, and then I start, I start coming up with the, with the core functionality associated with, ooh, associated with, uh, okay. The core functionality is associated with the, uh, with, with the different features, right? Viewing, editing, deleting, right? So I start with, in this case, I start with um, implementation for the uh, people schema, right? And when I sat down, uh, this was when? This was Saturday, I guess. It was late at night on Saturday, around 21. I sat down and I'm like, okay, fine. For the people, for the people database, this CRUD application is going to have to allow us to view everyone, all the people, right, that are part of the data lab, view individual uh, people, right, so a single view, uh, and then, uh, I don't know what I was thinking about, I just figured, well, maybe we might also be interested in searching for specific people, right, if we had a lot of people that were part of the data lab, we'd be interested in searching, right, so you need a separate get route to search for a person, right. Um, so this is what I was doing in this particular commit. And you notice that if I open the, again, this, in this case, I'm working with routes, right? We're done with models here. I'm working with routes. If I go to the, so supposed to be people, but intense uh, route, you notice that I have this, uh, these different 
get routes, right? So I'm saying the, the route for this particular route, so the slash here simply means uh, intent slash, right? So I have the, the base of the application, which is a domain, and then slash, intents, and then the root itself. Think of this as being indexed, right? So I'm saying that when, 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 someone, when someone comes to the application, the fully functional application, and says, I want to, to issue the uh, intents route, I just want to go to the database, and then pull everything from the intents of the people schema and then render them, right? Of course, in this case, I'm just selectively rendering stuff that I think is important, like the ID, the full name, and the email. I don't need to include everything, right? The reason being that when you're listing information, you just need the, the bare minimum um, data that is going to inform whoever is interacting with the application to say, oh, I want to view this person. I want to edit this record. You understand what I mean? You don't necessarily have to list everything. So if, if this collection had, uh, let's say, um, had documents with 20 fields, you don't have to include all the 20 fields. You just include the important fields. And I already did the data work for you. Those mockups that I gave you have specifics on what you need to render. Yeah? Uh, of course, it's not cut, uh, cut in stone. I mean, you could choose to to do something else if you want to. Right, so I implement the, uh, so this is, this is implemented by this route. Very simple, right? How do I specify the intense route? I'm saying, um, and by the way, what I'm doing here is I haven't yet started rendering, right? Uh, if I, if I <clears throat> ask questions if you want to, people always uh, kind of, coming up with excuses, I didn't because it's hard or something, right? Uh, so, <laughs> at this stage, <laughs> at this stage, right, I told you, start by implementing the API calls, but you don't want to listen. You're playing around with the interface, which, I'm sorry to say this, but it looks ugly, right? Yes, it is ugly, the interface. Because working, <laughs> working on the, no, it's true, Wait, playing around with the, playing around with, um, the styles, you spend months doing that. Because there's always something that you can make more beautiful and pretty. But that's, that should be the list of your worries, right? That's, that's like, there's nothing to it, right? If you look at what I did with the styling took me just less than, I guess less than five minutes. In fact, less than two minutes. Because I'm just using Bootstrap, right? Uh, this thing here, this, um, this thing you're seeing here, the final result here. All I did was uh, in the header of, um, of, the, of the layout file, I just linked to Bootstrap and that's all. Everything is being rendered and the styling, I, didn't, I don't have to worry to say I want to make this uh, button blue, right? Bootstrap does that for me. I mean, of course, there are a number of other um, CSS frameworks that you can use out there, but we agreed that you're going to use Bootstrap, right? Just because it looks nice. Um, so, I implement, this is the, the, the route that just goes to the database, reads everything, no filter, right? Get everything from the database. Once you get, <sighs> get everything from the database, once you get the stuff from the database, just render it, right? Render it as, Send back a, because I'm sending a request. What's the request? The request is give me content associated with the route uh, domain name slash intent. That's my request. What is the response? The response I get back is JSON output, JSON formatted output of everything from the database. The way it is, right? Which is the stuff I have here, right? Um, and this is good, this is fine. Because with this, with this I can easily hook up, I can easily pull this, this information and maybe use a front-end framework like React or Angular or Vue, right? But because of time, we're not going to do that, right? So I get, I, I implement a feature that pulls from the database, and this is trivial, obviously. 
Uh, <laughs> well, that's what you wanted. You should have told me, right? What do I do? Because I've exported, I've exported the, um, I've exported that schema. Remember that intent schema that I implemented as a model? Yeah. I implement, we implemented a model, right? A schema, right? So it's just a model. Model schema is just used interchangeably, which is lo lo located here, right? So I'm, I'm making reference to it because I want to use it. And I'm saying I want to link to it using this name, right? So I just create a variable called intent, right? Again, by convention, the, the name of the instance of the schema has to be, uh, is it camel case or something? Can't remember, right? Um, which is why it's an upper case. So I create an instance of that schema uh, because I've exported this thing from here, right? And then uh, I just use the mongoose method find. So the instance of the schema dot find, this is nothing more, this is just a query. This is similar to db.collection.find here. This thing that you are seeing here, this part here. This, this query here is, is no different from the db.collection.find, yeah? We agree, right? Yeah? This thing here. So what, so what, what, the, what the instance allows you to do, what Mongoose allows you to do is to run those different queries that you can run in MongoDB, right? But, but using a different convention, obviously, right? Different syntax. So in this case, I'm saying just pull everything from the database, which is why I'm not specifying any filter in here, and then execute the query. But when you execute the query, two things can happen. Either an error will occur, or an error won't occur, right? And there are two variables that you have access to, error and, well, you can name them whatever it is you want to name them, but the first, the first parameter here of the function that you fit to execute is going to be um, an error variable. It's associated to the error, right? And then if, if the, the query is successfully executed, you play around with the intense variable in this case. Right, so it's an anonymous function that takes in two parameters, the error or the non-error result, right? Uh, and if you've been reading up on things like promises, this would be like, uh, if you wanted to use promises, this would be like something akin to, uh, uh, what, if success and reject or something, right? Okay. All right, so, so, so the thing though is, if, if an error occurs, what should we do, right? I am saying in this case, my implementation, I'm saying if an error occurs, I want to log that error, right, on the terminal with a specific of what what error actually occurred. At the same time, I want to send, because what I'm logging to the console is something that I'm probably going to view in the logs or that I'm going to see myself, right, when I'm running this application. But at the same time, if I deploy this into a production environment, I want to be able to send um, an error message to the user, to the browser, obviously, because the user will be accessing this using the browser, to tell, to inform the user to say an error occurred. If no error occurs, right, in which case you've successfully fetched information from the database, what I'm saying here is I want to log everything that I've put from the database on the terminals or on the console, right? At the same time, I want to send back the response because this is your response. I want to send it back to the user. But because at this point, I haven't yet started rendering any uh, HTML yet, I'm saying the stuff that I'm putting from the database is going to be so, somewhat like a, a, just JSON, Boston format, right? So I'm saying send whatever we are pulling from the database, send the entire payload as a response to the user, which is why I'm saying response.json, send intents. And then that's it. With this piece of code, the user will be able to, every time a user makes a request to the route slash intents, um, the user will be able to see this output here. But it gets even better, right? See, seeing, this, seeing this garbage here is not very helpful, which is why I told you to read up on Postman. Right, did you? No. <laughs> how many downloaded Postman? Well, Lighton did. Don't know how many people did, but. <laughs> Sorry? Postman, Postman should be your friend, right? And I do believe it's also implemented using Electron.js, right? How cool is that, JavaScript? Don't know. So, with Postman, 
I don't have to, you, you, because the, 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 the thing is once you, using the workflow that I'm describing to you to say don't worry so much about the, um, don't worry so much about the styling and the forms and whatnot, you start with implementing the APIs, which is what I'm doing here. But for you to be able to interact with the API, if you don't have a form, you better be, boy, you, the thing to ask yourself is, but how am I going to simulate a person adding a new record to a form, for instance, or updating a record, for instance? Postman. Right, so with, uh, with Postman, I can just issue the same request. Yes? So, sir, the, the response that you're sending, yep. that, that you're getting on that uh, uh -huh. what's, what's making you do that in the post? Because initially we tried to What's making me do, do what? Do this? Uh, yes. <laughs> no, this is not Postman. This has nothing to do with Postman. What do you mean? But like we tried with who? No, no. So, so I, I, the number one, we're using the native driver there, and uh, the the problem was we were trying to we were trying to to send multiple responses at the same time, which is why we ran into problems. Um, a workaround to what we are doing would be to concatenate the output, we're looping through, right? And then we're trying to, every time we loop, we're trying to send a response. You don't do that, right? This is why we're getting that error. So you can only send a response once or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Mongoose, Mongoose helps us solve the problem anyway. So, but this is not Postman. This has nothing to do po with Postman. Postman is a ah, software application, <laughs> application software. Uh, this is revision for ICT 11.10 now. Postman is nothing more than application software that allows you to send requests to simulate how a user would send a request to a server, to an application. So as an example, if I wanted to simulate what I've done here, I want to send a request to, uh, to this application. I'll fire Postman, right? And then I will specify the URL, right, the, everything, right, the domain including the, if, if there were like a query strings, I would include the query strings here. Um, of course you can specify the query strings here. Notice what happens to, can you see this? Okay, notice what happens when I say name, right? Right? Right, it comes up there, but this is not what we want, right? The request that we are simulating is what? It's a get request because we are reading, right? Um, we want to view content, so it's a get request, um, and then all we do is we feed it this 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 URL here. We send this, and lo and behold, what do we get back? We should be able to get back the response, right? Um, and at this stage, obviously, probably are thinking, but why should I bother doing this when I can do this in Chrome? Uh, for some of you, I'm, I'm guessing you're unable to do this in Chrome. I think I have a plugin that allows me to do this in Chrome. You'll be able to, you probably see the entire thing in one line or something. It's not properly formatted, is it? I don't know. The, may, maybe the, the thing to do would be for you to use the developer tools to actually see the output, but that's like time consuming, right? As time consuming, you are better off, um, you are better off, guys, by just using Postman. And I do believe there's a Chrome plugin, plugin, application software, there's a, well, yeah, yes. you, don't, you don't have to download Postman like, uh, like I did, I'm running it as a desktop application here. It's funny how people say the difference between a web-based application and a desktop application is a desktop application doesn't require internet, <laughs> Connection, really? Okay. <laughs> anyway, we are straying away here. Is this making sense now? You see, the, what, what I want to what, what I want to emphasize is the fact that whatever whatever interaction you have with the database, you will go through this flow. You use the instance of the schema to run a specific query. So, if I was uh, issuing a post request, this would be like intent dot save, right, intent.save. 
Um, the, the only difference really is when you're saving, you specify, typically when you're saving, you're creating a, a new record, right? You just save, but when you're updating, you specify a filter to say these are the records I want to update with these values, right? But the flow is the same. You have the instance of the schema dot, the query that you want to ex execute, and then optional uh, parameters here, like if you want to filter, if you're interested in, in extracting specific fields, like if you have 100 fields, maybe you don't want to extract all 100 fields, so what do you do? You specify comma and specify the fields, right? Similar to how we run this in MongoDB. Um, dot execute, all the time, every time you, every time you have instance of the schema dot query, you will be working with two possibilities. Either there's an error or there's no error at all. And the way that you handle the outcome of executing that query is you use um, an anonymous function, right? Anonymous function that takes in the error and uh, um, a parameter that represents a success, right? Uh, and then you process this. And the processing is the same, right? Whether you are rendering, whether you are, you are, you are rendering that content and sending it back to the user or you're just logging it on the console, it's the same thing, right? Console.log, if you just want to log it onto the console. Uh, response dot, however you want to send back the payload, if you want to use the browser, right? So you see things like uh, res.json, res.send, res.render, which I think you've used before, and I guess you've become an expert here. This is boring, right? Um, <laughs> res.render. Tell me if this is boring so that we oh, skip to. Right. I wonder how the videos are not different from what Lighton is saying. But yeah, there's a question. <laughs> okay, here's the thing, right? Observe. Here's the thing. Here's an example, right? Let's say, let's say we have. Um, let's say we. What are the common characters we have here? Uh, ma, ma, ma. Okay, let's say I want to create a route that's going to, a route that will render JSON formatted uh, content from a database from this particular collection, the intent collection, people collection, um, and bringing results that match names that have uh, an A in them. That's weird though, but an NA. You understand what I mean? We, we want to create a route, just a simple route. I'm just trying to, to see if this will make any sense, right? We're trying to create a simple route that example route, router, route that will list all users with uh, NA in their names, right? So if your name has NA, like Mwanaumo, right? <laughs> I don't know who else has an NA. We're going to <laughs> create a route. How do we implement this route? Um, I've, I've separated these things. I mean, the last thing you want to do is to, to use your app.js or server.js to implement all the routes. Why it becomes so cluttered? I was counting the routes that I have here, total of 12 so far, this would be like the 13th route, which is why you separate them, right? I separated them, I have the people, route, uh, the people routes are separated from the project routes. So I have three files actually that represent separate routes. There's a file that represents uh, just, we just render the index page, right? And then I have routes associated with people intents in the intent.js file. It's actually in the root, routes, intents.js. And then all our routes associated with the proj projects are in the project dot or projects.js file. So, um, so this is the same as what you've been doing with app.get, app.post, right? It's just that because I've separated these, I'm creating separate routers and then I export them and import them in the, in the app.js file in my case, right? So, we're saying we want, we want to query, we want, when a user 
when a user types this, this is what we're implementing. When a user types HTTP, localhost, full colon 3000, full colon uh, intense, full colon search NAs or something, right? We can search NAs. This can be anything, actually. You can rename it when you feel like it. Nobody cares, right? So, because actually people will rarely, you rarely have people typing in these, these things manually in the address bar. How do they gain access to the routes? Clicking. When I click view, I'm activating a particular route. When I click edit, it's a particular route. So the user doesn't know beforehand, right? So the name doesn't matter, really. But, but it's always nice to stick to convention and things that make sense, right? Because other people are going to read your code, and you're going to have to refer to the code at a later stage yourself. So you want to make sure that these are things that make sense. So in this case, it's because we're running out of names here. Search NS, we're creating a route that will allow us to render all people in the collection interns that have in their name an NA, right? So how do we do this? We are saying the, the route here is going to be, how do we specify this? How do we specify this? If we want to implement, if we want to implement this, what request, what, get, what is this request going to be? Give you an idea here, sorry? What is this route going to be? If, oh. if, oh. yeah. You see, if going here, going here requires that you implement this, sorry, it requires that you specify your route as this. And, and if, if going here, If going here means you're going to this route, and going here means that you're going to this route, this is an example route, I'll use my number here. It means going to this route, then how do we implement this route called, uh, how, how are we going to implement this thing here, in line number 29? No, it's a session is. The, the reason is session is, and I don't know if you've been copy pasting this stuff, the reason is session is, is you notice when, that when I export the route and when I import the routes in here, um, I, I specify his middle instruction here to say everything that is associated with slash intense should be mapped to the, the root itself. It's mapped on, if I go to the, to the intense route in here, this, the root, for, the root for the intense route is represented by slash intense in the application. Meaning that everything that comes after, um, anything that has uh, an intense before it should exclude the intent or intense, right? So in this case, uh, for us to implement this, we'll just have to issue a search NA, and then slash. This is simple. We are saying, and maybe let's use something else. We're saying we are going to implement an anonymous function that will take in two parameters, request and response, always request and response, uh, except when you're playing around with middle, in which case you have to feed it the third optional parameter, which is next, right, the callback. But request and response, in the request the response, we just want to say, we want to send a message. When, we, when a user goes to this thing here, for starters, we just want to see if it works, right? So we'll say, 
intense search any router. Yeah, I don't know if this error is to do with what we're doing right now. Let me just uh, check. Uh, the error is just, uh, I mean, makes sense. Port, port 9000 is already in use, right? It says. So I probably have something running here, which is this, I guess. No, this is a notebook. I probably have uh, the application running somewhere. I don't know where. So what I will do is I will just... Uh, Go to apps, and then I'll change this to. <clears throat> this is what happens when you're running too many different things. Quite 9001, right? And then hopefully the error is gone, yeah? No error anymore. Gone. Which is why debugging is important, because you can easily figure out what the problem is. So if a user goes to, I'll use Postman, if a user goes to intent slash search NS, they should see, ooh, what did we do now? Oh, it's supposed to be 9001, right? If a user goes here, they should see this message just, just prints out, it prints out this text that I'm saying, I'm just testing to see if this route actually works. So it does work. The next thing I do now is I start fetching the information from the database because this route requires that we fetch the information from the database, yeah? We are searching, we want to render everything that is associated with names with an NA in them. Okay, so seeing as that works, I will comment this out. How do I write the logic that allows me to pull information to the database and push it back to the user? It's simple. I know that the information I seek is from the intense uh, collection. And the intense collection in my code is represented by this variable here called intent. I've imported it, right? So I will come here and just say intent dot, because I'm reading stuff from the database, it's fine, right? This time around though, the find, the find function or method needs to be fed parameters, right? A filter. And this is simple really, we're just saying, uh, if we go to our database and uh, check Ooh. If we go to the database and just say db.datalab.rs.find. And, and the thing with, with what I'm doing here is, right, before you start writing that, uh, before you start writing the code, right, it's always a good idea to implement the, the queries. You run them in, in, in Mongo, right? Natively to try and see if they actually give you what you want. Do you understand what I mean? Like in this case, right? How would we be able to, to check, um, and I'm limiting it to one, but so this is the structure here. What we're saying is we want to check all entries that have an NA in them. So how do we implement a query that's going to feed you, uh, that's going to extract anything with an NA in them? Is this too complex? Uh, okay. Maybe we use something simpler instead of uh, this query. Let's say we, we want to... Okay, what if, what if, instead of an any, what if we want to pull, we want to create a route which when we execute is just going to pull information to do with Jackson, just Jackson's record. How do we do that? Question you have to ask yourself is, if you run this query here, it's listing all the documents, right? How many documents do we have? We have six documents in there. But we just want a document associated to Jackson. How do we do that? We are saying we must feed the find method with query that will tell us to say anything with full name equal to
mwanaume should return who mwanaume na i don't know if it's the uh, no, well, we didn't we didn't edit this <sighs> okay mwanaume is up there we just use blessed then makungu let's try and see if this will work i hope it does work So you notice that this returns uh, just one, one record, right? So we want to implement a, a route that, when we run that route, we just want it to return this record. Because I have already formulated a query that allows me to do this, it's a lot easier, right? All I have to do is have this same condition in my find method, right, in here. So I'll just say intent.find, dump it in here, right? In here, like so. Now, the, these queries can get complex, by the way. Like, for instance, you can have, um, I don't know if anyone is going to be working on this, you can have um, queries that will allow you to combine different conditions using and or or. I want to return a record that matches blessed makungu or ways. You use an and. Or oh, query, or oh, if it matches blessed, or if it matches query, return it. If I want a record that matches blessed, uh, Hawkins and Ways, then I'll have three conditions. Do you understand this? It's an or. Oh. There are certain conditions that will uh, require that you use and. Is this mutually exclusive, right? Both conditions must be satisfied. I want to return records that either the, whose computer number starts with 2017 and that person's name should have NA. So you have a query that will search for any computer number that has that begins with 2017 and the other condition. And or, or I don't know if anyone is working on that but return records where the password is equal to Oh, where, where these credentials, the username um, is equal to that and the password is equal to that. So both of those things have to match, right? If the username entered by the user is wrong and the password is correct, the user will not log in. If the password is correct and the username is correct and then the user will log in. And, oh, it's the same as the SQL queries that uh, Edward taught us, right? Okay. So, so we issue this query, right? And then I say execute, the execute command, and notice Visual Studio Code, oh no, I want to use brackets. Well, uh, I don't know if brackets can do this, but maybe it does, I don't know. Does it? Sorry? Well, you don't want to listen, right? I told you, use, use Linux, you want to use Windows. Go ahead, right? Okay, so, you see I'm, I'm chaining, guys, I'm chaining this, right? I issue the, I use the instance of the intent, intent schema to run the find method because I'm interested in extracting data from the database and then I chain it to the execute function because it will allow me to execute this query, right? This is how it works. And then the execute function takes in an anonymous function. This anonymous function will take in an error parameter or the second parameter will be when no error occurs at all. In this case, I'll just, you can name it anything. I'll name this intent, right? <clears throat> and then, we are saying if an error occurs, we want to process, process, process this if error. Process this if no error. But we're checking, right? We're just checking if error. There's, there's nothing like, uh, I don't think we can do this in Java, right? Can you? Where you say, uh, <laughs> can you feed a, a condition with just a variable? Forcey value. Are there truthy values and forcey values in, in Java? No. Sorry? No. Sorry? No, I mean, this is a, this is a forcey, this is not, so error is not, uh, it's, not a, it's not a Boolean. Force and truthy values, you can't do this in Java, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I'm just trying to, this is a count, I'm trying to co-opt you into forgetting about Java, right? Bye-bye Java. Okay, so, 
So, uh, right, if, and this is, a, this is a problem here, dev start. Okay, I don't know what's happening with the, I think I've changed so many different things, I've changed this to two. Okay, so observe, so if I'm saying if there's an error, what I want to do is I just want to log that error, right? error message. And the way I'm, in this case I'll just say, the error and then I'll just log the, the error variable. Notice that I'm just printing, I'm just printing this error variable here. So if something goes wrong, I want to know exactly what is going on. What exactly is the problem? Print out the error, right? This is why I have this error variable here. Otherwise, otherwise I'm saying, or maybe at the same, well just print them out anyway. Otherwise I'm saying print out Print out the what? Print out um, print out the uh, the result that you fetched from the database. Log it to the console, right? So much so that if I if I come here and issue sorry if I come to Postman and issue the query right now. Uh, ooh, I, I, I wonder if I can see it. We can see it on the console. I don't know. No, okay, we just changed the, uh, sorry, we changed so many different things here. We changed the port number to 9002, right? If I run this, um, I should be able to see the result here, right? So it's, it's, I'm just logging it to the console. So I can see the result of fish from the database here, right? Blessed Makungu here. I don't know if you can see this. It's coming up here. But this is not enough, right? Because ultimately, these, these routes that you're implementing have to be sent to the browser, to the client machine, which is why you use the res.send, res.json, res.render, right? So in this case, I'm saying, okay, fine. Uh, what I am going to do is uh, I will log this, but at the same time, I will, I will send, because I know this is like a, <clears throat> formatted in more or less like JSON format, it's an object, I'll just say send the JSON formatted output to the browser or to the client that's requesting this because it might not be the browser. In, in this case, we're using Postman, right? Uh, so I am going to come back here. Um, I'm doing too many uh, different things here. The ports are getting messed up here, right? Okay. Addressing you still. Okay. So I'm going to go to 9004. I don't know why that's happening. It's not happening that much. But if I run this, I should be able to see the record that matches that query. So you notice what you're doing when you're, whatever, whatever implementation you're coming up with, for the most part, what you're doing is you're just querying a database. You are writing to a database. You are deleting stuff from the database. That's all, right? And life is a lot easier when you're using uh, mongoose, right? In this case, is this fine? Right. I mean, so if you wanted to render this, for instance, uh, I don't know if you want us to render this, or we continue walking through the. I think we continue walking through the. Uh, the. Uh, We on this commit will we'll change back to master. Yes, that's the standard. I don't know if there's anything else. No, no, no. What do you mean? You you use body parser when you're trying to process stuff that is in a form, for instance, not rendering. We can we can render without body pass at this point. Um, yeah. Anyway, so we check out master right, and then we will we'll go to the next commit, which is um,
Oh, this is this is where it becomes a uh, ooh. Is this how you exclude the changes, right? How do you get rid of the changes? Check out dash dash, right? Okay. Okay, great. So we are we are back to we are back to master, right? And then I'll go back to to the next to the next uh, next route. I don't know if we should go through all the different routes, right? So I just showed you the the get routes, right? Um, maybe we should skip to the post now, um, because the post allows you to. I told you that the 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 HTTP methods that you're working with are three of them. Is it three or four? Three or four? We, we've forgotten how to count, right? <laughs> get, post, put, delete. Get for reading, post for adding new content, put for updating, delete for deleting content from the database. Okay, so we are going to jump on to post, right? I will check this, or maybe I should check out uh, everything to do with post up to here, actually, up to this commit message. Why are we learning hexadecimal? Well, there we go. Um, <laughs> you remember, <laughs> they used to ask, right? <laughs> They're saying, why? And they're laughing because they know it's them. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, for some people, maybe it's not important. I don't know. But, <laughs> well, anyway. Has anyone started using the UUID package yet? UUID package. Mm, okay. <laughs> uh, so, ooh. I just remembered hexadecimal, right? NPM. <laughs> Install. Come on. Sorry? On which one? Okay. Uh, ah, why are we learning this? There we go. Anyway, UUID. You will need this when you are automatically creating those folders. How are you going to automatically create the folders? How are you going to automatically create file names? If you remember what I was doing when I was creating, when the files that you were uploading during that project in the subject repository, you remember those names, right? Yes. How were they being <laughs> created? But anyway, <laughs> I don't know, right? Only God knows, I don't know, but. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he knows everything. Indeed. Uh, so I will I will run Visual Studio again. There's something wrong with me switching back and forth the different commit messages here. <clears throat> okay, so we we go back to our. Oh, sorry about that. That's wrong. It's supposed to be in here. We're gonna go back to uh, our project, right? So the question then is uh, how, how, how exactly do we go about implementing a post request? It turns out it's the same process, right? Remember we've already, well, the, 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 the first thing you have to do is figure out exactly why you're creating a post request. In our case, we have about two post requests. One allows us to add a new person. The other one allows us to add a new project, a new entry to the database, you need a post request. Uh, so what that means is we need to define a route or routes that will allow us to, or that will allow a user to specify where they want to go, right? So you define a route, and then after you define the route, you come up with implementation, the logic itself. At a later stage, you, you test out the logic of using Postman, but at a later stage, you implement the form that the user is going to use to interact, right? Click to submit the form. Let me navigate back to our 
thing here. Um, so, get request view. I didn't do that. I don't know what happened here. But, sorry? Yeah, maybe. No, there's no such thing with technology. I don't think so. <laughs> Miracles happen elsewhere, but uh, you know, wine, water to wine, but not this. Um, Miracles don't happen with technology. Human beings have control over this. So <laughs> let's not uh, lie here, right? <laughs> uh, we'll go back to our Heroku application. Get request. Why? We are viewing data from the database. Hmm? This add thing here is a post request. Why? Because we are adding completely new data to the database. View. Put request because we are updating existing data through the database. <clears throat> this thing here. Uh, sorry, Hawkins, we are deleting you, right? You have failed. But <laughs> we are getting rid of stuff in the database, so it's a delete request, right? Bye-bye, Hawkins. Now, um, so you notice these different methods. So we want to implement a route that will allow us to add, let's say, new intent, or add a new project. Hmm? What do we do? The first thing we have to do is we must go to our routes. We have two routes that we're playing around with here. We have a total of three routes, right? But two of them that we're using extensively. And in these two routes, we're just doing three things. Implementing get request, post, put, and for, and delete request. That's all we're doing. It's not that hard, right? So we go to our route, intern route in this case, and we only have one, I think we probably have one post request because we only add once, right? So we uh, just show you an example of a post request. It's the same process, right? You take in, you specify the, um, the route itself as a string, and then you, it, there's a callback that takes in a request and a response. Um, just do that. So first thing you do is you specify the route itself that you want to implement, right? What type of HTTP request is this gonna be? It's a post request. User defined string that uh, end users are going to use to navigate through your application. Or the strings that you're going to use as users are interacting with the application. Very few users will, actually users will rarely type, uh, it's like Facebook, right? When you're going to Facebook, well, I do this sometimes. I go direct to the Zambian Watchdog page, right? Facebook.com slash Zambian Watchdog. Boom, because I know what I'm looking for. But not everyone knows that, right? Some people would rather go access content by searching through Facebook, and then once they find that they want, they click the link. So links, buttons, right? Those sort of things, interactivity. But anyway, you specify the HTTP uh, method that you're gonna use. In this case, it's post, right? Uh, the path that the user is going to use to um, process that post request. And then um, an anonymous function that takes in two parameters, a request and a response. It's always going to be a response, and a request and a response. You send a request to a server, you get back a response. Send a request, get back a response. When you're playing around with the database, you query a database, there will either be an error or there will be no error and then you start handling all those different things. That's what you're doing, simple, right? Um, in this case, because we are creating a completely new record, and how we are creating a record, we envision creating a record, we involve a user typing in stuff into a form. The way you access data from the form is, you access the body, right? From the body, you have access to the different uh, 
the different variable, the variables or the names that are associated with uh, the values in the form. So in this case, it's probably a form um, that has a text field given the name, full name. You remember those things we are doing? Form, text, I wonder, can we do this? Uh, I'm wondering what we... Guys, have you installed Emmet? I want to show you something quickly. Okay, so. Remember... Remember, remember these things? This thing here. This value here, the name is what you use to, is, is where that, those body things are coming from, right? So request.body.name. So if, if you come to, if this is not very clear, maybe I apologize, we should go here, right? Observe. What is, what is the name of the data we're going to get from this value here, it is accessed by the name project code. How about the form associated with the name? It is right here. It's accessed by project name. And, and is this coincidence that, that the names, the form, the, 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 the form control names are the same as the, uh, those database entries, it's just me, right? This is how, it's a lot easier for me to, to write to write code, I guess, when, when there's consistency in the way that I'm doing things, right? Instead of like name one, name two, right? You don't want to do that. It'll be hard for you to debug errors, right? Name one, name two, name 100. You know, if it's not working, you change it to name five. Don't do that, right? Um, so this is what we're doing. So essentially when we have a request dot body dot we are accessing these things here. These things here. Right. Okay. Um, can do that. Great. So, but because because we are creating because we are creating a new a new document or a new record, if you want to think of these things as being records. What I'm doing here is I'm just creating a new instance of intent. Remember intent is nothing more than the model that we've imported, right, from that schema. I'm creating a new instance, and then I start associating those different uh, field names associated with the intent object to the things that are in the body. So I'm saying the full name, the, the full name um, object. Do tell me if this is not making sense. I'll go. I'll go and open uh, my model called intent dot model here. Notice the names. The way I'm naming these names, right? I don't like confusing myself because I want to maintain the names. You notice that, uh, and I think this is convention. I must have read it somewhere. All models. Uh, there's two things about my models, right? They are uppercase, the names, uppercase, and then there's a dot model to remind myself that this is a model, right? But intent model is different from intent route. If you want, you could have just as well named this intent.js as well. It doesn't matter because they're in two different locations, right? This is in models, this is in routes. If you, in fact, if you want, there's probably another in views as well, Views. Where is it? Yeah. Oh, I was just confused here because we we are using the commits, the past versions, right? At this stage, I hadn't yet created the the view for intents. You understand what I mean? If I was to go back to master, you'd see everything. Do you understand what we're we going through? The steps I was going through, right? Don't worry, I assure you, you will learn how to do this and you will do what you need to do. There's still a bit of time, but a bit of, uh, I guess, uh, sleepless nights. We shall get there. It'll be sad if we don't, right? But anyway. Uh, 
<laughs> be very sad, right? Yeah. But 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 uh, we sh we shall still learn. How do we learn? You know how in life we, you shall be used as an example. They failed. Yeah, but we shall, we are getting something. What I'm trying to say is, irrespective of what happens, we shall get something back. Using you as an example, they fail. <laughs> Sorry? I'll, I'll tell you one thing, right? This thing here, there's nothing difficult about this thing, right? I bet you there, <laughs> there are probably people amongst you, right? who walk amongst you in your cohort, that could have easily done this within a day, perhaps, or even two days. Boom. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Not too many, but they're probably there, right? Yeah. It's a learning process. You will learn this. I mean, it turns out that uh, for, and I, I, I do hope you figured this out in 2010. For you to, to, sometimes it takes you doing things over and over again to understand what's going on. Not reading, but doing. Which is why I've been thinking about, go and try out this small little thing, just insert one field into <laughs> just one field. Because the more you do it, the better you become. Right, like I'm a seasoned, I'm a seasoned program, I'm not a developer, but I'm a programmer. So I have to read some of these things, right? But the way that it sticks is I do it over and over again. Right? Do it over and over again, I try it out. I don't just sit there and I'm reading and watching video tutorials. I'll tell you this, you can watch videos for the whole year and probably won't be able to gain much from this, right? But anyways, um, so we go back to, the, uh, to this thing here. So what I'm saying is I'm, I'm creating a new instance of intent and then I'm saying what I want you to do is associate the full name field associated with intent with with an element in the body that has the name full name. This could have been F name, it could have been anything, right? It's just coincidence that it's the same thing here. So this is what I'm doing. And, and I'm just using this, is this a ternary or anary operator here to say, if you don't, if you find something in the body with the name full name, then get that value. Otherwise, just give it an empty string. It's a cheap trick, I mean, you could, um, um, this, this becomes useful when you're updating content, for instance. You'd say, if you, find, if you find a value in the form for full name, get that value and then update the record in the database with that. Otherwise, maintain the value in the database. Right? It's a, just a quick way of doing it. Instead of writing an if statement here. Um, now, I don't know what's happening here. I, I, uh, I do hope, uh, I didn't anticipate that I would spend so much time here, but uh, is this, is this uh, somewhat making some sense? I do apologize for coming just now. Is this making some sense? No? I suggested 
Which route? The route. The one for the internet. Thank you, sir. Okay, almost. I don't know if it's because you are creating separate. Can, I, can I say that maybe we leave it at the post and then we'll sort out of put more after New Year's Day. Come and do. What I expect is um, stay up throughout New Year. Don't go and watch fireworks. That is it. Maybe we can enter it. If you haven't done the viewing and why not do that, entering the list of users, have you done that? These are users. Now you can do this. You can do it in here. Don't go and watch fireworks. Oh, but yeah, my question is. Uh... I'm using evidence so that I'm going to put this online so that I show people that they failed, right? But they failed. I'm recording this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're recording this. Sorry? Yeah. No, I'm just joking. This is, this is for you. Sorry? This one, you know what you Yeah. It's a form. No, this is not a form yet. So this is just a logic that's going to process. You said because when a, a user, when you're interacting with a form, there's two things that are happening. You issue a get request to render the form, right? And then when you click that button, you issue a post request to submit that content. Now, how you want to process the stuff you've submitted is up to you. You can do it on the client side, but in our case, the processing happens on the server side. So. You render the form, it comes back to you, you see the form, get request, get request to render the form, and then you have a post request that is going to pick, because the assumption is once that form is rendered, the user is going to type in stuff, right? Once the user types in stuff, you, you, the way you process that information is through the post request. So at this point, you don't render the form using the post method, you render it using get. In fact, if I was to, here's the thing, right? You look at, um, Observe, if I, if I say, because we have, uh, this is intense route, right? If I go to the browser and type in this, uh, localhost 3000 intense add, we've implemented this route, right? Observe what happens, yeah? If I run this and say, uh, let me just go to view terminal here. Um, if I say, I guess npm run uh, dev start. If I, and I don't know what's happening with, I, I guess the switching around of things is messing these things, right? Here, observe what happens. If I copy, uh, we've implemented this post request with um, the path add, right? Intense add. Logic dictates that if I run this into the browser and write this like that, oh sorry, it's 9001, it should be able to do something, right? But you see what happens? This is an error. It's saying, the, the server is returning a response to you. It's saying, I don't know, I don't know, I, I don't understand this request. You don't have, there's no route, I don't have, I can't save you anything because no logic has been implemented to, um, to provide this service to you. But observe what happens if I go to Postman and I say, uh, and let's see what, what happens in the post request. I don't know what happens in the intense request. Look at the logic, we are creating a new user and okay, we spit out the JSON afterwards, right? Observe what happens if I go here and say 9001, well, just paste this, right, 9001. 
Be because um, there's a couple of different things. I don't know what will happen if I issue this request the way it is. Huh? Let's try and see. Um, it's a post request, so I'll tell Postman say I want to issue a post request to that path. If I send this, I should be able, I, I, I do hope a record will be created. Ah, Christ. It's not going to be created because one of the required fields is not there. But, but you notice here that, um, that uh, there's a difference in what's coming back here. This error is different from what you see in the browser. This error is my implementation. I implemented my route to say if there's an error, spit out an error to the user, right? And that implementation is here. Huh? If error, send out, res.send, error create, what this, sorry. Uh, is it error? No, this is not, where is that? How are you even doing the right thing here? There we go. So if there's an error, I said, did I say error creating interns? What error is this? Error. Yeah, error creating new intern, right? So this is me, it's part of the logic. The only way this will work is, you know why there's an error, by the way? It's because if we go to the model, you see this? What does this mean? This means that whatever new entry that you are creating into the database, when you're creating that entry, the field full name is required, it must be there. So if I pass, um, actually let's do something else here. Let's, I'm sorry we're doing a number of different things here, but I want to showcase to you that that will work, right? I'll change the schema so that this is string without the required field and I'll save this. Um, after I save this, I will just rename this to 2000, ah, Christ. I don't know why this is not working anymore, 9001. Address in use, but it's, hell, it's not 9009. I don't know why this is happening here, but uh, Oh, could it be that, uh, no, it has nothing to do, there's something happening here and I haven't quite figured out what it is. 9005. Is this even where the error is coming from? Let me just check here. I'm just assuming that it says address in use, yeah? Error code, address in use or something. Let's just check and see. So it's good to confirm. I'm going to to run prod. I'm wondering why why this is happening. I do hope uh, no, this is not. I don't think that's. Uh, This is weird, right? Okay. Ah. Could it be that the stuff we are doing here could have hit this? Why, why is that happening? Anyone know? I don't know. What fell? <laughs> what, what is she saying? That would be nice. Do you want to come and take over the wheels, the wheels of fire? It would be nice. What fell? Oh, no, 
<laughs> but here's the thing, right? When they say riding a bike is simple, it's not a literal, it, it means it's something that's doable, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, and I think it is doable, actually. Uh, <laughs> No, not when it's crashing, and I, I, I guess it has to do with, let me just undo this. Maybe it, it might be saying that, uh, let's undo everything, and then try and see if we can run Nodeman again. This is weird. Let me just check check out. Da, 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 da. Yeah, whatever is whatever is happening, it, it it has nothing to do with the application because I just checked out this thing and this the error is still there, right? Look at this. We are we are on uh, we are on master now, but that area is still there. Where is it? Where the where is the error coming from? I wonder. We don't know. Let's see. Debugger is in the room. Where is the error coming from? Ms. Linda, where is the error coming from? Oh, there we go. This is just a package. Oh, it's it's start, not dev start. Okay. <laughs> this this is this is silly, right? You see this error. This error is still coming up. It's saying. Uh, Sorry? Yeah, almost all the ports, right? This is weird, really. Let's let's try and say let's try right now. Maybe I think this op five thousand. I think this, this opening and closing of stuff is something that's I don't know what what's happening here. I have to debug here. It's it still thinks we we are we are using port port nine thousand, but okay, maybe. Oh, I see what this thing is doing. Okay, okay, I will. I will change it afterwards, right? I will change it afterwards. I think it's 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 all. I'm using um, the, the dot environment package to specify, and I think you've used this before, right? To specify environment variables. You know those things, if you're using uh, um, MongoDB Atlas, for instance, uh, one of the things you do in the settings is you specify the environment variables, database under by URL, for instance. Uh, it's pretty useful. You can configure um, so many different things, like for instance, what you are working on, Matthew, you might decide, to, by the way, the API thing, we have a discussion about this, I think, after New Year's. I'll send you an email with the details. But you can either choose to configure those URLs in the dot, dot environment uh, file if you want to, or you can just insert them into the database. Right? Probably inserting them into the database would be wise in this case. Right? Uh, but anyways, let's, let's try and see if we, can, uh, if we can go back to that, if we can go back to that, uh, <laughs> I'll just un undo the changes, and then I'll see if we can go back to the commit message that we needed to get to, post request. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, I'm just going to check the environment variable not there. And then I will say uh, npm run uh, desktop, right? You see, this thing is. Uh, I'm wondering, I'm wondering myself, I don't know why this is a... Uh, I'll, I'll give this uh, 9007 then. Hopefully this will work. Okay, so <clears throat> what were we even talking about? So this, the, the form, right? Sorry for that, guys. The form, right? If, if, I, if I go to, notice I was saying, I go to 9007 and issue the, that, that post request. We were unable to, yeah? I'll just open our postman here. We, we were unable to, why? Because we haven't yet implemented logic that renders the form. You render the form using a get request and then the post request. I don't know what I was trying out here. So if I try to add a new person here, that error is hopefully going to come through, error creating new intent. But observe, if I simulate what typically happens when you, you are working with the form, I go to the body and then I specify to say, I'm going to have full name, uh, full name is going to be Banda Movita or something, I don't know if it's such a word, but, and I enter this, this should work because um, we, we can create this, we can create this, new record because we've supplied the one of the required fields which is full name yeah uh, but all these other fields are empty so this would be what you'd be doing in the form right if a person comes up with that form and you haven't implemented validation and they just enter their full name but they leave the other things blank like no email no phone number those things will still be entered into the database but with empty strings if we go back to the database and query this database you shall notice that we shall notice that we shall have that person in there, the Banda Murita, right? So this would be what you'd be doing. You'd be saying in your form, new form comes up, you click new, you're creating a new record. Panda movie. For you to implement the edit, you just uh, issue the put, uh, put, is it put, put, uh, what? Put method, right, in here. And postman is quite handy, guys. Get, post, put, delete, all of those things. Which is why I told you, those form things will kill you. They will eat up your time. You, there's always something to do. Oh, I think I should make this, I should change the font, right? And you even feel important, but it still looks bad. You feel like you're doing work. Forget about that, start with them. I, I, I've gone through that, I've been through that myself, right? You, you know, you're listing things. No, maybe the bullets should not be circle. I should look up how to make them square, right? And you feel, you feel like you've done it. Don't do that, I know, right? Those are traps, don't do that. Focus on the logic, right? It turns out that's the most important thing. This styling stuff is easy stuff. You can do that in like five minutes, actually. Can we say you go and uh, try out uh, implementation of, uh, because I know all of you are retrieving stuff somewhere, right? Can you go, do you think you can try that out? Now that you know what to do. The starting point is collection structure. Hmm? Yes. So, uh, on the, on the, I remember last time you said that what is the is the schema section. What's the It's not the other way around. Like the well, it depends. I mean, so, I'm, it's, it's only possible for you to, you see, you can, because you go through a process, right? And you, whoever will teach you the software engineering thing will probably teach you a thing or two about uh, 
these artifacts are not software engineering actually, they 3010. Is it 3020 or 3010? The person who's going to teach you dynamic programming and whatnot because there's a component of databases, although you're going to be looking at SQL databases, right? Relational databases, I think. I don't know why we're still stuck in the past, but this is the future, right? So CouchDB, MongoDB, this is the future. But, but, but they'll, they'll run you through a process you go through to properly design these structures. You just don't wake up and say you're going to design something. You collect requirements. You come up with the logical design, so-called ER diagrams, for instance, interrelationship diagrams for, for relational databases. And then you use, you use the ER diagram to come up with the actual implementation. What I'm saying is, before you start writing code, right, designing schemas, pull out a piece of paper if you have to. Just write down the fields that you think need to be a part of what you're implementing. And then create the collection. After you create the collection, implement the route. Well, create the model, and then implement the route. Create the logic. Everything you'll be doing is the same, right? Request, response. Request, response, create database, update database, delete. It's the same, there's, there's nothing difficult here. Yep. What's the difference using the Using? I don't know, you'd have to because check the... So, so the, so the thing with Mongo, 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 right, or Mongoose is that uh, you will find uh, methods that do the same thing. For instance, when you're updating, you will find find one and update, find one and replace, find one and remove, find one and delete, right? The way to figure out what those things uh, do is do what Lighton does. Lighton is a good student. He's downloaded offline manuals, <laughs> right? Uh, so it's actually mo it's supposed to be a model here, right? Method. Oh, that's D. What? That's D. These are yeah. I told you, you don't want to listen to me, do you? Thank you very much. Someone is listening. <laughs> you see, if, if, you, if you do this, right, you won't have an excuse to say, I was unable to because I didn't have internet access to access the manual, so you were stuck. <laughs> you were stuck, right? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, but hey, that's besides the point. Be, be a good student, right? Download offline manuals, everything is available offline. So, uh, anyway, if I can't search for that, you're saying the difference between create, it's model.create, right? I can't find it, I don't know why. Uh, so all you have to do is go here and read up on what it does. Shortcut for saving one or more documents into the database, right? Um, how about save? Save this document. I guess save probably saves one document from what I was able to gather here, right? This just saves a document, right? There's even an example here. But create... model.create, but create says um, one or more documents. I don't know. So I mean, it's a, the thing is, I, I don't know on top of my head, uh, but the manuals have this information for you. I was giving an example of, um, uh, Find one and find these things here, right? If you think about it, delete and remove, they sound like they do the same thing, right? Yeah, so you, you want to be able to get into the habit of trying to figure out how to use the manuals. You cannot memorize everything there is here, right? Find, find by ID. Find one or something. Is it find? Find one, I don't know if it's find one or something. You know, it's all these different things. 
You, you better be able to, you see, you can't memorize everything, but if you have the method, if you have the manual with you, it's a lot easier for you to do these things. Like, I do this all the time. So when I was uh, just, uh, and I think I need to go here, but I will do this. Hopefully this session was quite helpful. Um, but I will, um, I will try and see if I, I can get back to master here, right? Sorry. You see, and I'm sure you are thinking, why is Lighton teaching us how to use Git, right? Why? He's probably stalling, right? And I know there's some people, he's stalling. It's for your own good. <laughs> but, but you never want to listen. Um, what was I about to show you? No, I wanted to, I don't know what I wanted to check for, but I don't know. Anyway, I don't know what I wanted to check for, I've forgotten, but, but um, hopefully this was helpful. Um, <laughs> yeah? <laughs> is, this any, is this the same as the, as the videos? Here's, here's what, I, what I want you to do, right? Think about this for a second. Start doing the implementation and feel free to ping me if you get stuck and if you need help. Some more. Hopefully very soon we, sh we shall go. Now I was tempted to do the, the so-called, the, inf the infamous to-do application, right? The to-do application is like the hello world of programming language. Have you noticed how everyone who's teaching how to do these things goes to the to-do, right? To-do, 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 to-do. I wanted to do that myself, but I sat there and I'm thinking, maybe it would make more sense if I quickly hack together an application that these people can easily relate to so that they know how easy it is, right? And I didn't make these things up. The, the commit messages are there for you to see, right? How long did it take us to do this? I started doing this uh, on Saturday, day before yesterday, at 18.54, right? These are the changes that are there. I can share this if you want to. There's a historical record of what I was doing. Now, I practice what I preach myself. When I say you should stay up late at night and do these things, right? Uh, you can see the, the records of what I was doing here, right? How long it was taking me to implement some of these things. I guess it gives you an idea of how complex some of these things are, how easy they are. For some things, I was spending more time because when you run into a problem, sometimes you have to go online and you search for solutions. It's not that hard, right? Especially if, you're not, if you don't do this often. But observe, it's taken us, uh, I don't know how many commit messages there, are, but uh, oh, a lot. I didn't realize. And the last commit was today, actually, around 13. But these were minor, minor things, because I was trying to push, I was trying to push this thing to deploy it to Heroku, right? Because if, effectively, this is what you're going to do with this application you're implementing. It might not be Heroku, but it needs to be deployed into a production environment so that it looks aesthetically pleasing, better than this, actually, right? And all these things, right? I did them if you, once you download this, once you clone this repository, you'll notice that I was, I was doing all these things towards the end. Right, let me show you how this application looked like before starting with Bootstrap, right? Observe, if I search for Bootstrap here, I was only styling with Bootstrap, uh, styling Bootstrap components, uh, styling bootstrap, I guess we can go to this this commit message here so that you see how this application looked like, right? So that you see that Lighton actually preaches what he, uh, he, yeah? he practices what he preaches, right? <laughs> ah, don't know. <laughs> is, is, is this fine? Uh, more important, guys, uh, on a serious note, I do, in PM, I do hope you're learning here, right? These are, these are important uh, tools of trade to learn, I assure you. You might not believe me right now, but uh, you will remember me, hopefully. Um, 908. <laughs> Maybe you won't, right? Maybe this will be. Do you remember why your mother whipped you when you were six years old? You don't because it's irrelevant, right? Five years from now, you will not remember that we had this interaction because it's an insignificant part of your life, right? But. Observe, observe, right? 
if I, if I reset this to 100, look at this. This was before I styled the application with Bootstrap because I didn't have to worry about styling, right? I was just creating this because I, like I had a mental picture of how I wanted this to look like, right? And then afterwards, so, so these links were quite all right, right? Look at how the views look like. They look kind of ugly, actually. View, look at this, right? But I didn't care, right? As long as I'm able to render these things, as long as the functionality works, I know that getting to the stage where I have this is a trivial process. Very trivial, actually. So I don't worry about styling. You must not worry about styling. Hopefully, I don't know. Okay. If this is fine, then maybe, I, I hope this rant was helpful. <laughs> Was this helpful? So let's try this Thursday. Let's Thursday I'll come through. Maybe we can uh, I can sit with individual uh, people and try and see what you're struggling with, so that we can do this together. Maybe right? Um, yeah, it's, a, yeah it's, it's like cheating. Sorry. A, a demo. For, is this demo not good enough? Oh, so well, the third demo, yeah. So the third demo on Thursday, we have to do that, actually. Um, but you see, for, for sword, right? Before you can actually start moving things to the remote server, you need to figure out a way of extracting content from the database, packaging it into a zip file, right? And then moving the payload. So the, 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 the task for you is uh, extracting metadata, associating the metadata to the file, packaging the file and the metadata into a zip file. Sending is going to be easy. The other thing you have to do is, remember the rendering? You have to put information to the database and render the record similar. Most of what you guys are doing involves this. This. This is why I'm showing you this. You want to be able to view the pending records, the active records. And all those things are just filters, right? Show me records that have a status equal to pending. It's a filter in the find method. Show me records that are, uh, have a status of active. It's a filter. Show me all records, no filter, right? And I know one of the reasons why we didn't really spend so much time on MongoDB is because we are doing trivial things with MongoDB. We're not doing complex things. Simple queries that we're doing. So if I were you, right, a good starting point is identify all the different queries you're going to have to issue to Mongo write them down somewhere, save them in a file. Hopefully you are versioning this file, saving them somewhere, synchronizing them to the cloud. And then when you start implementing these routes, all you do is you just rewrite those methods so that they are mapped onto the equivalent mongoose uh, functions. Not records, actually, the queries, right? Do you understand this? For instance, when you want to render pending records, if you don't have this, a collection yet that you're working with, you create a dummy collection, right? Maybe on Thursday we'll have to sit down and maybe do the design of the collections here. From what I'm seeing here, we're not doing the right thing, right? Looking at the time, maybe we, we will sit down as a group, actually. All four of us will sit there. Uh, there's a whiteboard somewhere. I bought a whiteboard. We'll stick it up somewhere. And then we will plan the design of the collections, right? And then start the implementation. How does that sound? Yay. So <laughs> now you see, you see that, uh, you know how some people will say, we say, do this, right? Don't be corrupt, but the ones that are corrupt now, when I tell you go and do this, I'm showing you that I can do this myself. Is that not nice? I think that's nice. Guys, um, I'll share this um, 